know why people like it when I whistle when I enter a video. It's slightly strange <laughs> to do a lot of whistling. I like whistle when I'm in Costco or something. And people are looking over at me and say, why is that guy whistling? <laughs> um, there's something you need to look up. You could find a thousand pictures of it. and You can go like the Wikipedia page too. Type in spherical harmonics. Yeah, spherical harmonics. Um, the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, once again, of course, is the hyperboloid in the torus. Torus, of course, is magnetism, which is the extrinsic side of the dielectric. The loss of energy or inertia manifests as a three-dimensional force vector that is the torus and the hyperboloid, where the hourglass shape is the geometry of increasing inertia and acceleration to the plane of inertia, i.e. the dielectric, all of which, both of which, superimposed upon one another are centered at this uh, point of inertia, not the plane of inertia, but at the point of inertia. That point of inertia in the case of an atom, which I've said humorously, I've called it hard light. It is super high energy light. I made a prediction years ago that uh, super high energy light would uh, manifest uh, primordial matter. And of course, the most fundamental matter is hydrogen. All atoms are just nothing other than compounded hydrogen. That was discovered last year when two in-phase lasers at extremely high power uh, were brought in constructive interference, not destructive, of course, and they manifest matter. Anyway, here's a, a chart of several different geometries <coughs> of, uh, of a spherical harmonics. Here you can see a donut around a hyperboloid, and you can see various hyperboloids around each other. These are just the spherical harmonics of various atoms, and of course, whenever you take the snapshot, you'll get a different spherical harmonic. So they're actually showing you a lot of the different shapes of really one thing. It's like if someone takes uh, 50 shots of a gymnast, like a microsecond later, it'd be a totally different pose, and another microsecond later, it's a totally different pose as they're doing their gymnastics. Keeping Mother Nature really simple, because she's a hairy arm pit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt, and she doesn't have a calculator. The only thing she does is pressure mediation, centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, force in motion, and inertia and acceleration. And the interplay between those two, of course, is constructive and destructive interference. These are the harmonics of the entire universe, as you can see that underneath the ferro cell. Okay, so these are the spherical harmonics of the manifestation of the interplay between magnetism and dielectricity. So fundamental matter, or the atom, let's just take the most simple atom, of course, which is hydrogen. And we can see trillions of tons of that being emitted out of black holes is actually being emitted at uh, the geomagnetic precession of these black holes. They're actually, you find pictures of them, real pictures, not interpretations of this. They're under galactic jets or astrophysical jets. Both of these phenomena are exactly the same thing. This is a ZTP or a zero-time particle with a spatial um, spherical frequency. A spherical frequency, of course, would be an atom. Light itself, even though it's extremely simple is a compound circuit, is specifically it is a coaxial circuit, transverse electrical magnetic with a given frequency, and of course the frequency is synonymous with its energy quotient. The smaller the spatial footprint, the higher the energy quotient is. Gamma radiation has an extremely small spatial footprint compared to infrared radiation or visible radiation or even radio, and all of those are the exact same thing. It's amazing that we think these are different things. Gamma radiation, x-rays, UV, visible light, radio, they're all exactly the same thing. They're only typified in distinction attribution by frequency and wavelength. Specifically, light is a coaxial circuit. The longitudinal rarefaction and compression are that thing which these so-called scientists are not actual scientists. They're atomists and relativists. They call that the photon or the light particle. There is no such thing as a light particle. It's rarefaction and compression along the dielectric or the, uh, the, uh, the line of propagation of this light. Of course, then again, we have to talk about light not actually being an emission. What's being disturbed, of course, is the medium. This is the reason why Nikola Tesla said light is a sound wave in the ether. Well, sound's not an emission. It's a disturbance due to the release of energy. As my vocal cords vibrate, it's disturbing the oxygen and nitrogen out of the air. So-called speed of sound, of course, is a misnomer. It's the rate of propagation of the medium against the self. The same is true of light. Speed of light's not constant. It changes uh, due to whether it's passing through glass or water. But it's not actually passing, and it's not an emission. But all of us human beings suffer this ignorance a blindfold, and we hear the word speed, we think something is moving, but that's a matter for another discussion which I've already made. But keeping things simple, which Mother Nature is so simple, 
you have no rarefaction and compression of the dielectric. This, of course, would be the photon or the light particle, i.e. the proton. And all free neutrons become protons after 17 minutes. This means that which we call a neutron is nothing other than a modality of a proton. And all the greatest experts of field theory say there's no such thing as an electron particle, which is true. There is no such thing. As J.J. Thompson discovered, same, called it one unit of dielectric induction. Eric Dollard, uh, Nikola Tesla said there's no such thing as an electron particle. Uh, Oliver Heaviside, on and on, no such thing. This means there's only one fundamental particle. That one fundamental particle is just super high energy light. So if we have a frequency that's so high that everything becomes overlapping, we don't have a, a set frequency. What we have is super high energy. Frequency is so high that we can't actually use the word frequency anymore. What we have now is not frequency, but ah, spherical harmonics. Oh man, this makes Mother Nature really simple. What if you could stick all of nature, all observed phenomena, in a simple little list? What happens when energy gets so high that frequency is indiscernible? Oh, you would have no longer rarefaction and compression. You would have this constant, however you'd have a harmonic, this constant light particle, that which we call a photon. And the electrostatic generator measured in picometers around this light particle, which is the inner atomic volume of any and every atom. But let's just keep it simple and talk about hydrogen. We'd have, uh, we'd have a spherical harmonic. Elimination of wavelength and frequency due to the uh, capacitance being so high. This is what we call a proton. Yeah? This is why we see trillions and trillions of tons of hydrogen being emitted from black holes. Mmm. Yeah, it's so high there's not frequency anymore. But there is something still there. Elimination of frequency because it's so high, because the capacitance is so high, we have spherical harmonics. Brilliant. So, what happens when you turn up the capacitance so high that the frequency essentially vanishes? It doesn't totally vanish, it transforms into something else. There's no longer frequency and wavelength. What we have is spherical harmonics, constructive and destructive interferences between. You can type this in. You'll find a thousand different charts like this. Some of them are colorful and pretty. Pretty type in spherical harmonics. You'll see something like that. Yeah. These are little snapshots of any and every atom exhibiting spherical harmonics as it's blinking in and out. Hmm. What? And it's interesting, it makes it kind of simple. Compound frequency, just like upper and lower sideband, we have spherical harmonic. Except the upper, and si upper sideband and lower sideband of a, of a fundamental particle, i.e. hydrogen, would be spherical harmonics. Mmm. This would also, too, bring in to answering amplitude, and that's the reason why different atoms with different capacitances have different inner atomic volume as measured in picometers. Why? Isn't that brilliant? Super high energy light is fundamental matter. Except now, since there's no more frequency because the frequency is so high, we have something else. We have spherical harmonics of a pulsing atom. Isn't that brilliant? Isn't it brilliant? What about unstable spherical harmonics? Why, unstable spherical harmonics is in the case of like radium, uranium, plutonium, lots of other different elements. Yeah, these unstable spherical harmonics would be beta and gamma emitters. Oh my! Isn't that neat? Oh, that's so simple. Unstable, super high energy spherical harmonics are themselves emitting light. This is a reason why plutonium and uranium is emitting gamma radiation and beta. Oh my, isn't that neat? If it's really unstable, it's trying, it's so unstable. It's not only emitting beta and gamma, it's emitting out helium nuclei, or what we call alpha radiation. It's decomposing, it's so unstable. Jeez, that makes Mother Nature really simple. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the great truth of the universe is, is that you have to start with the premise that all of this stuff must be super, super, super simple vis-a-vis -vis Mother Nature, Natura Naturans, but that human beings are really, really, really that dumb. This makes explaining atoms really simple. Spherical harmonics. Brilliant. Unstable atoms are emitting their own light. Gamma emitters. If they're super unstable, they're not only emitting gamma, they're also, too, emitting helium nuclei. Two protons, two neutrons. But neutrons are just proton modalities. There's only one fundamental particle in the universe, that which we call the proton. And if it's a slightly different variant, discussing neutrons is a little bit difficult, but all branches of science admit a free neutron instantly, poof, becomes a proton. If all free neutrons instantly, poof, become a proton, which they all admit, that means a neutron is just a proton with a different attributional modality to it. Geez, that makes Mother Nature even more simple. Hmm. This makes explaining matter really simple. Hello, children. There's only one fundamental particle in the universe. It's a proton. A proton modality is called a neutron. There's no such thing as an electron. That is a unit of dielectric induction due to the spherical harmonic of this little electrostatic dynamo that we call an atom. All atoms, whether it be gold, silver, argon, blah, 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 are just compounds of hydrogen. If an atom's really unstable, it's emitting gamma and beta. If it's super unstable, it's emitting gamma, beta, and injecting its own nucleus in the form of alpha. Like uranium will uh, uh, half-life ultimately down into lead. This is lead. It's covered in rubber, but it's lead ball. This used to be uranium. Who knows how many millions of years ago that used to be uranium? Jeez, that makes Mother Nature really simple. How do you explain super high energy capacitance where frequency can't exist anymore because it's so high it vanishes. There's an experiment like this, it's not related to light, where you actually, the frequency gets so high, like, you know, a frequency like this, if you actually get the frequency so high, instead of like my jiggly finger, it becomes so high, you can't see anything. It's like that. It's like, where's the spherical harmonic? Which is what atoms have. Spherical harmonics. Spherical harmonics would just be a euphemistic explanation of ultra, 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 ultra high frequency. It's so high that frequency doesn't exist anymore. Ta-da! Spherical harmonics. Why Mother Nature is so simple. It took a fat, bald, tattooed man to explain it so simply. It's a lot better than a PhD in any university has ever done. Take that. Take that again. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant.